Let's begin this morning on line number one. Good morning, Jim. You're on the air. Hi, Jim. You're on the air, sir. Hello. How are you? I'm doing fine this morning, Mr. Learning. How are you? Good, thanks. Seems like this phone system is kicking up on me. Okay, well, let's yeah. hope that we we'll cross our fingers and hope for a clear connection. What's on your mind today? Okay, I just want to go to follow up on what Greg Malone and uh, George Mercy have been saying about Turdon 101, the okay. herbicide sprayed on the power lines around the valley here and across the territory along the power lines. Now, uh, they will add muskrat falls to this, covering thousands of hectares over thousands of kilometers of these power lines, mm-hmm. which will across hundreds of rills, brooks, streams, rivers, and bog land. Tons of this stuff will be spread. We know this chemical is a health risk at every level. It is water-soluble and collects in river bottoms, bog bottoms, and on vegetation, so it gets into the food chain, land, animals, seals. We eat all. I understand places on the island are exempt from this, but not Labrador. Well, I mean, where, where else is it exempt? Where they're spraying it on the island, sir. Well, in that case, nothing is exempt. Yeah, no, all should be. Yeah, when we did brush free. removal on the sides of the highways as part of the uh, hope to protect motorists, the way they kept it down or their approach to it is to spray this agent white. So they're spraying it everywhere. <clears throat> well, I, I think Mr. Malone should be lauded for his uh, his uh, fight that, with this thing and George Murphy as well, because it just it should not be because they're going to bring in tons of this stuff into our territory here add this to the methylmercury in the river and, and what's going on here with us what is happening are our people completely asleep this stuff is deadly let's let's spread out some of the blame here this morning sir I, the big problem here as far as i can read it is that the provincial government has an easy out and a justification for using because it is cleared for usage by health canada if, but, but I'm, I'm just stating it as know, a fact. I, 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 I'm, I'm I, not I, picking a fight with you. I'm I, saying that the provincial government is basing their decision on approvals offered by Health Canada. That's where the real trouble lies, because if we offer any cost-saving solution to any provincial government, even if there's people working inside the government that know they're making bad decisions, know they're jeopardizing health, sometimes they are so convinced and moved by the potential to save a dollar that they make these decisions. This the real blame lies at the federal level, how can we possibly expect provinces who are sometimes potentially strapped have a huge demand on money to be able to make the quality decision if we have a health authority that governs the entire country that has made a poor decision on their part? And I think that's they deserve at least the lion's share of the blame, in my, in my opinion. opinion. Exactly. And this really, for us, this should broaden the, the, the base of the fight because uh, get more people involved, get people to... to push back against this. And Health Canada, we know that Health Canada or any other federal agency can be a bit of a joke when it comes to the uh, environment under the Steve, Stephen Harper regime because they have no time for it. It's mm-hmm. Monsanto to the to the wall and that's all it's ever going to be. Yeah. yeah. I, I, we have to raise the specter higher and higher and higher until we till we begin to do something. No, Health Canada be damned. They, they mean nothing. I, I, I say that in terms of what their real power could be if we push back against them and what their real, the principle, there's no such thing as a principle in this. They're ter- it's a terrible thing, the, the way they carry on. And, and for that lady to stand up in the house and dismiss that and, and shove it under the House Canada thing, uh, that's a dodge. And, and that's just not going to work for us very well at all. We're still going to be poisoned. No, it's still, it, it is a dodge, but I, I, my only point was that we uh, should indeed spread the wealth so far as laying blame. When we have a health authority that many problems, all the provinces will use that as the benchmark for how they approach decision making, whether it be on pesticide issues or any, any other, uh, any other product that's under the control and review of the federal government. When we have that flawed starting point, we are de- we are destined to make bad decisions. It's like everything else in this world, Mr. Learning, as you know. If you don't start from the right point and the informed point of making a decision, you are almost doomed to make a poor one from then on. So when Health Canada allows for this atrocious use of pesticides, then we have to start there and follow through. The provincial government deserves a swat as much as we're willing to give them one. But Health Canada really is the beginning of the flawed process. And I'm just trying to share the the blame around. Yeah, it, oh no, it's a, I take your point. It's an excellent one. And it, it, it's absolutely what the system is. But that still comes back to no matter what. We're in a, a big place here with a very few people, whether it's on the island or whether it's in the territory of Labrador. It's, mm-hmm. it's, we still have that weakness going on that... For those who are indifferent, 
will allow the deadly thing to rise. Yeah, well, we can't be indifferent on this one. Uh, And I give Mr. Malone, he opened my eyes further. I was one of those who made bad decisions with the products I purchased to protect my own property. And I have, I admit it, even though it's a terrible decision that I've made in the past, maybe it was because I didn't really, really necessarily understand what was going on. You Sometimes you see something available on the shelf in a store, and you think, well, there you go. Well, I mean, you trust them. And, you, you do, and it sometimes and it's blind. Well, you're betrayed. I mean, we're... we're I would like to think now that we're not trusting them that much anymore, that we're pushing back, we're asking questions. Our kids are very smart these days, have you noticed? Mm-hmm. They're very aware of what's going on around them, and you give them the message in the school that this stuff is wrong, they will carry this to the conclusion that you want, to fix it, take it away. It starts with the kids. I trust them. Well, I, I certainly think that we, our eyes are opened up as generations move on. Sometimes because we learn more about the products that we're approving. Sometimes because there's just a different mindset from children. Look no further than they're so quick to turn off the lights and the TV when they leave the room. They're so quick to recycle a bottle where other people say my age and older are not so inclined. So evolutionary decision-making, we hope it improves, and it's got to improve on this front. Now that I've read more about it and understand more about these the use of pesticides, now I'm 100% opposed. As In the past, I was sort of on the fence and thinking, well, there's got to be appropriate buffer zones from watersheds, and we have to do it carefully, but now I'm completely opposed. So well, it's, it's amazing reality. how information can arm you. Well, absolutely, and you can see where this stuff just goes and goes and goes and collects and collects and collects because it's water soluble and it runs all over all over the place and we end up eating it, no question. Yeah. Either in a partridge or a fish or some place for us that, that we have no control over it. So for heaven's sake, let's tell the kids and let's get this thing stopped and let's give Mr Malone a, a lot more time than he's getting on this. Well, I've tried, I've tried to be very fair and thorough with him, and he's been on twice on the same matter, and I continue to welcome his call, your call, or anyone who wants to discuss it, including the governments at their level, because we need to understand the justification for their decisions, even if they are bad decisions, it's still worth exploring that part of the story. I appreciate your time as usual, Jim. Thank you very much. All the best. Take care. Bye-bye.